WPP has suffered the worst stock slump since 1999 last week after its chief executive slashed the company's profit outlook and predicted a year of little growth. Didn't slash our profit the outlook. industry it's a slight exaggeration. It is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> Hold on. I never get a chance to actually get my words out when Sir Martin Sorrell, the chief executive of WPP, is here. So he needs no introduction, really. First no, of all, Sir Martin, no, no, you've, had a rough, you've had a rough time. No, it was a tough year last year. Yeah, and we, it, said it, we said it wasn't very pretty. Uh, just so we're clear about what happens, flat top line, down a little bit, to be fair. Uh, margins flat, and profitability slightly up. Overall, 2018 didn't start as well as it could have. No, Is that fair? No, that was, right. that was January. We, well, actually, to, again, to be, to be fair, it was ahead of budget. Accurate, always. But, but down, on, down on last year. Well, flat on revenues and down about 1%. Uh, on net sales, but we'll see. We'll see how we'll see. how the year pans out. But you just overlay to, just, that, just, just, Sir just Martin. So when we looked at the budgets for eighteen, just hold a sec, which we do bottoms up, the operating companies came in at about one to two percent up in terms of net sales uh, on the top line, and yeah. we, we took it down because, right. given what happened in the last nine months of last year, we wanted to be cautious as we went into. Sir Martin, this year. I want to talk about the tariffs. So you overlay that with, um, you know, shareholders didn't take it exactly well what happened, and that also triggered a sell-off in a lot of other media companies. So this is not only mm. WPP, mm. but then you go to today the tariffs, mm -hmm. the tr possible trade war. How difficult will this year be? Well, uh, in theory, because of Korea. Young Chang, the viewing figures were down, but actually sponsorship and, and, and support was strong. World Cup, we'll see what happens there, although what happened in Britain uh, doesn't bode well, for, certainly for the, the English team in the World Cup. Uh, and then last but not least, the midterm congressionals all buoy the, the advertising yeah. sponsorship market. So in theory, you should see another half mm. percent growth. If you go back, you call it a mini quadrennial. The maxi quadrennial, when you have the Summer Olympics and the U.S. Mm -hmm. presidential election, is usually about a percent on growth. So in theory, it should be. But, mm -hmm. but what we've seen, two things really happening. Long-term technological disruption mm -hmm. in production, in media and distribution, exacerbated by cheap money driving activist activities, EBB activity, private equity activity. So there's short-term pressure whilst that long-term change is taking place. No point in moaning about it, and no point in saying, you know, uh, even, even you can analyze it, fine, but no point in moaning about it. What you have to do is alter your approach, right. your but model. So, and so, so Martin, that's, what question, we're, that's what we're in the process of right. doing as package companies, right. for example. But my question, yeah. was this trade make it worse <clears throat> if we have a trade well, war? Clearly, uh, a trade war if it reduces trade and activity, it will make it worse. If GDP is forecast to be up in the top end of 4% as opposed towards 3% last year, and you have a, a trade war, it will reduce economic activity. It will make it worse. Clearly it will. But that's the overall... But, but well, the interesting thing about our levels of activity, if I look at the UK, for example, in the midst of Brexit, where uncertainties are high, it was a hot spot, meaning positively mm -hmm. a hot spot for us last year. In fact, it was one of our fastest growing markets. Why? Because companies were hesitant to invest in fixed capital equipment. We talked to the authorities about this. Mm -hmm. They see it too. But they were prepared to invest in marketing and advertising in order to tickle up the top right. line to try and grow the top line on the basis that next year, if life gets tougher, they could reduce it because it's a variable cost. Now, we, we think it's an investment, not a, not a cost. But that, that so uncertainty or volatility mm -hmm. unusually has brought a benefit there. So yep. I'm not 100% convinced if there's a, a, a trade war uh, that it will be that ba bad in the context necessarily of domestic economies, because with increased uncertainty, we might actually see increased investment. Tom. Sir Martin Sorrell, you've got the upper Tom's right speechless. hand corner speechless of the, for the first time in his life. Martin, you've got the upper right-hand corner of the FT this morning as Procter & Gamble walks a supposed $2 billion away from the ad business. They're going to bring their marketing in-house. And in the Wall Street Journal, there's a smart article about how Comcast wants Hulu because basically TV's dead. Disney's already figured that out. In five years, how are we going to consume advertising? Well, I, I'm not sure that, that your, your summation of what P&G uh, is saying is quite correct. I didn't think they were going to take 
everything in-house, as you suggest. I think there was a suggestion that certain activities would be taken in-house and there would be a focus on creative activities and they'd reduce the number of their agencies. Reducing the number of the agencies will actually probably be an opportunity rather than a, a threat as far as we're concerned. But there is a changing landscape. But as you well know, Tom, if you look at where we are distributing, our media book is about 70 to $75 billion. Uh, if I asked you wh wh what is the biggest destination for our investment, not Bloomberg, sadly for you, uh, it goes to Google. So about $5 billion last year out of the $70 billion, $75 billion went to Google. The second largest destination was Facebook, just over $2 billion. So seven out of the 70, 75 went to Google and Facebook. If you went job back five years, neither Google or Facebook were in, I think, the top five. So what we've seen is a major change in the way that we distribute our investment, what we call media investment management, for our clients. Uh, it's now 40% of our business is digital. So right. the answer to your question, mm -hmm. but, in five years' time, 60, 70, 80%, arguably everything we do but, will be digitally okay, oriented. Okay, but, but Sir Martin, this is absolutely critical. Have we reached a tipping point where ads are invasive second by second in people's life, where the young kids, the even the older than the young kids, they just simply don't want to consume advertising? How do your clients adapt to that? No, that, that's, you're, you're making a generalization. I know you like to, to, to go to the extremes, Tom, but that's not true. If you, you advertise or target when a consumer is considering a purchase of whatever it is, and you, you choose the time and the moment, uh, that's, that applies to millennials, centennials, uh, people of my age, people of your generation, any generation. It's a question of um, just making sure that the ad or the sponsorship or whatever it happens to be is targeted at the right time, the right moment, and in the right way, adapted for the medium that you're talking about, whether it's a large screen TV, a small screen mobile device, mm -hmm. or whatever it happens to be. So it's a question about the appropriate message at the appropriate time, and given the amounts of data that we have, and given, which is an important qualification, access to that data, because that's going to become a critically important point when you look at the growth of a Google and a Facebook and an Amazon and others. Given access to that data, I see no reason why you shouldn't right. be able to target in a much more efficient way. And going back to what you said about Procter & Gamble, I think one of the things that Mark Tr Pritchard said is the importance of targeting mm. in the most effective and the most uh, appropriate way. So it's a question of being more precise uh, on a, an individual-to-individual -individual basis.